Hi, in this video, I will be showing you problem number 2 of uh, chapter 8, section 3, which are from additional suggested problems in your handout. A tank is 8 meter long, 4 meter wide and 2 meter high and contains kerosene with a density 820 kilometer, kilograms per meter cube to a depth of 1.5 meter. Find A. The hydrostatic pressure on the bottom of the tank, B. The hydrostatic force on the bottom and C. The hydrostatic force on one end of the tank. So you have a tank which is 8 meter long, 4 meter wide and 2 meter depth and in this you have a liquid uh, which is kerosene in this case um, which is of 1 point meter uh, depth. So you have a kerosene here, the liquid is kerosene and which is 1.5 meter depth. So the depth of this liquid is going to be 1.5 meters. Now the first part of the problem is asking the hydrostatic pressure on, on the bottom, hydrostatic pressure on the bottom of the tank. So the hydrostatic pressure um, by the formula pressure equal to rho g d rho g d rho is the density which is given in the problem which is 820 kg per meter cube and then uh, g which is 9.8 meters per second square and then d which is the depth of the liquid which is 1.5 meters if you compute that uh, you are going to get this to be 12,054 um, Pascal um, at this as this is a huge number we will divide by um, 1000 and make it 12.054 kilopascal Pascal divided by 1000 which is approximately uh, 12 uh, kilopascal so this is the first part of the problem which is pressure at the bottom of the tank, which is 12 kilopascal. Then part B is a force, which is hydrostatic force on the bottom of the tank. So uh, in, in the concept uh, video, we learned that pressure equal to force divided by area. Uh, just force per unit area. So if you multiply both sides by A, you get force equal to pressure multiplied by area. So we got, um, so we are going to find out the hydrostatic force on the bottom, which is pressure times area. Pressure we already got, which is 12,054 uh, 12, uh, Pascal times area, which is the area of the bottom which is a rectangle. So it is 12,054 Pascal times area of the bottom which is a rectangle which is 8 times 4. The length of the tank is 8 and the width of the tank is 4. So 8, meet, eight meters times 4 meters. If you do this computation the force um, is going to turn out to be approximately 3.86 times 10 to the power 5 newtons. You know that pressure is, force is measured in terms of newton. This is the second part of the problem. The third part um, is a tricky one. Hydrostatic force on one end of the tank. Hydrostatic force on one end of the tank. It will consider one end of the tank to be this end where the base is 4 meter wide. So if I take a, if I find, if I do a different picture for that one. So you need to have 4 meter wide and then the height is going to be 2 meters. So uh, we are looking at the side of the tank this way which is 4 meter wide. Uh, and then the liquid, the this is 2 meter height. The liquid is actually occupying 1 feet 1.5 uh, 
meter depth in order to find out the force on one end of the tank um, the the distance above each at every point the distance above the liquid is different here so it is not the same uh, like part a and part b so as the distance of the liquid or the depth of the liquid above each layer is different we have to do this problem in terms of Riemann sum method so let's take the height we are going to place the origin uh, on the top layer of the liquid and then imaginary origin and then we are going to run the downward x-axis um, along the height um, along the height and then the di distance of the liquid is from 0 through 1.5 and then we are going to divide the 0 through 1.5 into number of sub intervals and we are going to place we are going to take the ith layer of liquid which is shown in the picture the ith layer of liquid and then this is the one we are going to find out uh, the pressure for and the area and then we are going to get the hydrostatic force then by adding all these forces on all layers of the liquid then we are going to uh, have the hydrostatic force on one end of the tank so for that first step is to find out uh, the area of the ith strip so area of the ith strip uh, which is length times width length is 4 and then the width is this part is delta x um, that is delta x 4 meters and delta x meters and then we are going to find out the pressure on this ith layer pressure on the ith strip that is rho g d which is the depth of the liquid, liquid above this layer in this case we are placing the layer on the um, i the sub interval so that distance above is going to be x xi it's going to be xi that is xi now the force uh, on the ith layer is pressure times area pressure times area which is rho g rho g xi g xi times 4 times delta x now force now for the entire end of the tank is sum of all of these forces and also we are going to allow the number of intervals between 0 and 1.5 to increase to infinity so it's sigma i varying from 1 to n f of i so it is going to be limit as n approaching infinity sigma i varying from 1 to n rho g x i times 4 delta x so this Riemann sum is going to be converted as an integral as we normally do so it is integral 0 through 1.5 that's a variation for x then x i and delta x are going to change to x and dx inside the integrand so it is rho g x 4 dx rho is a constant which is 820 g is a constant which is 9.8 4 is a constant these three can be removed out of the integral 4 g 4 rho g integral 0 to 1.5 x uh, dx is 4 rho g x square over 2 between the limits 0 and 1.5 so if we do the math here so to simplify 2 rho g x square which is 1.5 the whole square minus 0 square so if you substitute for rho which is 820 then g which is 9.8 times 1.5 square uh, what you get would be uh, approximately uh, 3.62 times 10 to the power uh, 4 newtons 
this is the force on one end of the tank force on one end of the tank Hope this video helps.